Yeah, man, I'm not even going to try and hide my excitement, boys. Welcome to it. Um, two members of the World Champion Sevens team, the Blitzbox in studio, Ruan. Uh, Branko, welcome, guys. Um, I, I've been taking these deep breaths and sighs ever since that final, that weekend. No, it, it almost broke me, man. How are you guys feeling now that you've come back? Have you come back down to earth? Two for two, back-to-back -back winners. Uh, this must be just the, the best time of your life, man. Um, yeah, look, it's, uh, it's still pretty unreal. Um, <laughs> I think if you look back at, or if we just go back two weeks ago, yeah. the challenge pretty much looked impossible. Um, you know, so to have come uh, to a cup final in London and then go all the way through it in, uh, in Paris with Fiji losing in the quarters, um, you know, I, I still remember when that uh, final whistle blew, I was in tears. I was crying like a baby, you know. Uh, I was crying like yeah, a baby so, with my baby in my, yeah, my hands. It was pretty, pretty amazing to be part of it. Um, I'm so glad, glad to be seeing Vanna there. there. There was such a balance of, of kind of youth and experience. Branko, normally I'd be talking to you as one of the young <laughs> players, but you've done so much in a brief amount of time that you've been there. There is a different dynamic in this team. Obviously, the Commonwealth Games threw things you know, up into the air a little bit. It looked like this was a one-horse race with Fiji. What, what turned around? Was it a moment? How, how, how do you put it all into perspective in your head, man? Um, firstly, um, I don't know. I can't explain it, actually. I can't describe the, the, the way I'm feeling it at this moment. Although we played like way back, like two weeks back, but uh, the amount of players that we have in our system uh, it's a great thing for us, uh, especially the, the guys is coming through the, the academy, uh, academy side. And, and they just stepped up, like guys like me, Cecil, and Roscoe, there's not, there was not in the team for the last two. Um, the guys just stepped up and they, they proved that they, they're good enough to be there. So the I'm proud systems, of the boys. We, we always hear about the systems, and I think Neil has just done something. He looked exhausted. <laughs> you guys broke him, man. You broke him with that build up because it, it wasn't even a great start to the tournament. What did he say to you when you found out that Fiji had lost? Like, how do you keep that under, uh, you know, under control, knowing that, they, that you had that, that opportunity? Yeah, so the, the first time where Coach Neil actually told the team that Fiji lost is actually after our semi-final, uh -huh, I clever. think. Yeah, or, or, <laughs> or right before our semi-final, I, I can't remember. But yeah, we weren't actually focusing on Fiji because going into the tournament, we knew already, listen, yeah, it's actually out of our hands, you know what I mean? Like, we can't control what Fiji's going to do, if they're going to win or lose. So. Um, I remember I was, I was actually walking t to the warm-up of our quarter-final and I was walking past Fiji's changing room and they were just like down and out and I thought to myself, these aren't like the faces of guys that just won a quarter-final or a World Series. And I was just glancing back at Dylan Sage and I was like, what happened to Fiji? And he was like, no, they lost. And so I actually knew before we played quarter-final and I think once the boys also found out you know, Fiji lost, it just kicked us into another gear knowing, hey, the ball's actually back in our court now. So, yeah, and I think uh, once that opportunity came, we weren't going to let it let go it from go. there. No, for sure, man. And it's, I think the most impressive thing about not only the way that the, the gentleman culture within Sevens as a whole, but, I mean, there is a lot of love there. You can see that this is one of the close, most close-knit teams, undoubtedly, in, in rugby. Yeah, definitely. I think, I don't know like how people see us from outside, but when we, when we, when we win that huddle, it, it's just, just uh, like a brain of brothers. And Some we play for each other, yeah. yeah. And... I don't know what I would do without these boys, though. <laughs> Don't make me cry again, dude. Don't make <laughs> me cry again, man. Um, so, of course, a big part of last weekend's um, kind of intensity was the Springboks also winning the most dramatic test against England. Score predictions for tomorrow, boys? I'm very positive. Um, you know, well, we were playing while they were playing, but we just heard like it was quite a performance they put up. So um, I'm very excited to see them actually play tomorrow for the first time live. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm backing the box all the way. I'll say about yeah, 10, 10 to 12 points this time, I think. Uh, Ooh, we, nice. Yeah, I, like I think we, we're going to put up quite a show tomorrow. Um, I definitely, yeah, I think the, the momentum's there and certainly the spirit is there. Gentlemen, congratulations. It's been an absolute pleasure watching you play this season. You've had to do the hard yards. Um, it hasn't come easy, so you really have proven, proven your worth. Thank you so much for joining us, Thanks, man. James. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Just so awesome, man. So proud of these boys. Ruan Branco, part of a world championship winning seven side.